Good morning, Rabbi Isai. You might be wondering, it's Chalamaya now, and I'm clean shaven. It's a very good kasha. So today's the first day of the Oimer. Don't forget, Hayoim, Yoim Echad Ba'Oimer. But I'm here in Chicago, Erev Pesach, doing this. So that. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting there. So I just want to. I want to read to you two very interesting emails that are about a year old. So we have a minog that before the shear, and people like Mordechai Ashkenazi don't know about this, so I'm filling you in. Before the shear starts, I'm going to say Bezer Hashem the Oimer. Yeah. And who's today's sponsor? I don't know. We have to figure it out. Let me see. Oh, one sponsor, Yosef Biliak. My grandfather, who's like a father to me, his neshama should have an aliyah. So, Ravelli, just want to say thank you for having this fear reminder. Oh boy, I think oh, I cut it off a little bit. I've never, this is the first time ever that I've completed counting the Omer in full. Keep up the amazing work and may we all continue sharing in Simchas and doing mitzvahs together. Chag Sameach and Good Shabbos, Daniel Landau. That's one. Here's another one from David Black. Dear Rebelli, thank you for the sphere reminder. On the 47th day of the Oimer, I got into my car to travel to work as usual. I turned on the YouTube share. It was 8, 10 a.m. The first thing you said was to remind us that today is the 47th day of the Oimer. I suddenly realized that I was crazy tired the night before and forgot to dive in my room and of course count sphere. So before traveling, I stood up counting the Oimer and was good to go. Tashlumen from my room was later. Thanks so much for the reminder. I was able to finish counting with the bracha. Thanks, David Black, RBS. So that's why we are continuing the minog, Bezer Hashem. Um, yeah. Now, just one quick email. Who, David Black? Yep. I don't see him. Where is he? Maybe on another screen. Let's see. Wherever you are, David, wave your hand or something so I can see you. That's so interesting. Oh, no, that's somebody else. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, where? Talk. You unmuted him? Okay, I believe you. He's on. Beautiful coincidence. So he's on. You see, he's on for a full year at least. Maybe even more because he didn't start that day. Mazel Tov, this is from Chatzkel Yosefson. Mazel Tov, that are lus- lustrous. How do you say it? Oh, yeah. Lust- uh, well, okay, whatever. Next word. An honorable magichir upon the engagement of your Bechar. And may you see a bunch of nachas from this new couple. My grandfather has pleaded with you for quite some time to please turn the Zoom around after Sheer so he doesn't have to sit like a goylem for 13 minutes and not seeing his MDY family. So basically, he wants the YouTube camera to face the Zoom guy. As much as it is pleasant to look at you, with your glasses or without, you must admit that if you'd be, it would be beautiful to also see the family. So on behalf of my grandfather, who religiously listens to your shir on Torah anytime, please have mercy on his anikloch, because he has Kanaya Rehara as a bunch, and they will email you every hour of the day until it gets done, LOL, Chakosher Sameach, Chatzkel Yosefson, Yovaldik. Okay, so somebody has to remind me, it's, it's about these Zagunas. You see, once the Zaguna thing went into play, so now everybody's using that trick. So Beis HaRashem, we're going to get to Amit Beis here. As we turn on Amit Beis, the whole Amit Beis is about the Seder, basically. Says the Gemara, so we're in the middle of a sugi here, of course, you, you know, the mission that we just learned yesterday in the Zion Amit Beis. We're talking about Meiser. Meiser of animal. Taman Tanino, Remei Oimer, Be'echot Be'elu, Rosh Hashanah, Lemeiser, Behemoth. So, 
the first day of Elul, the green line right over here, is where it starts. This is the cutoff line. In other words, any animal that was born this part of the year, or the year before, Elul, because we do Rosh Hashanah, when's Rosh Hashanah? Tishrei. Aleph Tishrei. So what's this Aleph Elo business? Okay, for animals, just like the Rosh Hashanah and the Ilanas, this is Rosh Hashanah for animals. This is the cutoff point. So animals that are born, you cannot take a miser on animals that are born in Tav Shem Pei Aleph for animals that are born in Tav Shem Pei Beis. It doesn't work. But what's the cutoff? Aleph Elo. Not true. It goes with the Rosh Hashanah for human beings, the purple light. So we have a full month of a difference here. Therefore, anything that's born in Elul says Benazai, I don't know what to do with. On the one hand, one of my Talmudim says it's Rish Chodesh El. The other one says Rish Chodesh Tishrei. So you know what? Let's take all the guys that are born in the red month, Elul, and they have to do Meiser. Every tenth animal that comes out of the pen goes to the Kayan. It's by themselves. All the Elul's, all the Elulim are by themselves. Says the Gemara that according to the mayor, what qualifies an animal, what qualifies a year for an animal is when the animal becomes pregnant. And if you go back from Elo, five months, because you're talking about a small animal like a sheep, a goat, their pregnancy lasts for five months. So they get pregnant in Nissan usually. So five months before El is Nissan. That's the cutoff point. So the cutoff point is their pregnancy, which we see later on in El. Past that time, it's already a new it's a pregnancy that happened afterwards in New York. So it's a different different category, it's a different bunch. It's a different year. And how do you explain the Blazer of Shimon? They're talking about Tishrei. I thought it was incredible because this is a Pasuk in the hill. And if you're just reading the Pasuk, how do you make a connection between this Pasuk to Maizu But they were able to. And that's like, they became pregnant, the Tzoyim, Elu Habekhirais, the ones that became pregnant earlier in Nisan. The Amokim Yatu Bar, Elu Afilois, the ones that came later. We had this lush in Yerushalmi before. Afilois, later on. The latecomers. So the ones that are born, that are become pregnant in Nisan, they give birth in Av. If you, give, if you get pregnant in Nisan, you give birth right over here, in this blue box. So, what the Pasuk continues to say, Yisra'ahu, it's like a lotion of Re'ah, friends, be happy, af Yeshiru, they're going to sing. In other words, all these animals are going to be in one category. Whether they got pregnant in Nisan or after, it's in one category. I don't know what to do, says Ben Azar. You have Reb Meir on one hand. You have Reb Shimon and Reb Lezer Shimon on the other. You have Luli and Misaz and Reb Neatzma, and therefore I'm going to put the category Elos by itself. Okay, it's sad. No, you love Yechamisha Ba'av, Yechamisha Ba'el, Yechamisha Ba'tishrei. Look, if five animals are born right in this box, five animals in this box, and five animals in this box, so the Elul divides them, separates them. There's no connection between the three boxes. So you can't connect. You don't have 10 animals to take Meiser. You need 10 animals in order to take one off. There's no Tziruf. Let's say five were born in Tishrei. And five were born in Av. Meaning, the following of after Tishrei, not the preceding, not the one before. Not in this picture of Elo Tishrei, but rather Tishrei has of. You go all the way around of. So of is in the same calendar year as Tishrei. Harel Mustarfin. It's in the same year. Ask the Gemara. 
Ben Azai doesn't know how to explain his Talmidim. He's greater than his Talmidim. He should know exactly what month it is. What, what, what's Ben Azai's issue? Says the Gemara, also Rabbi Yemi, Rabbi Rabbi Yosheb, Shem Rabbi Shmuel, Bar Rabbi Yitzchak, Shekain, Nechliko Ale Aves Ha'ela. This is an old Machlaikis. This is not a Machlaikis of Ben Azai's Talmidim. This is a Machlaikis of the Great. Umaniu, Umaninu, Aves Ha'ela, Tan Rabbi Yoyna, Kumi Rabbi Yirmiya, Rabbi Yoyna said in front of Rabbi Yirmiya, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Akiva, who are the Great? Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Akiva. So Mamela, I, Ben Azai, cannot decide between the Great Says the Gemara, as we see, Meriz ben Azai chaver v'tamid hoyo the Rebbe Kiva. We know one thing for sure. We know that Ben Azai was a student, the Talmud of Rebbe Kiva. But from here, he could prove that he became later on a Talmud chaver. He became chashiv enough that he could have discourse with Rebbe Kiva and talk in a certain manner that's not appropriate for a Talmud. How do we know? In Tema Rabbi, if you say the Rebbe Kiva was Ben Azai's Rebbe and not a friend, you can't talk like that to your Rebbe in second person. That's not how you talk. Rebbe said this, Rebbe said that. Elamai Ben Azai was also not only a Talmud, but he's also a friend. I could prove the same thing from a different place. It says in the Mishnah, Amal ibn Azai, ibn Azai tells Rabbi Kiva, there's Machlai's Bisham and Bissil over there, he says, I don't understand you, Rabbi Kiva. We, we, we take, we have an issue, we take issue with the fact that Bisham and Bissil argue all the time, and you have to go and make it worse? Where they everybody agrees that there's an agreement here and there's no machlaikis, you made that into machlaikis. Again, not a nice lotion to speak to a Rebbe like that. He was a Talmud, but he was a Talmud Chavar. In Tema Rabbe, because if you'd say that Rebbe Kiva was his Rebbe, you don't talk like that. You wouldn't speak directly. You'd say it more in a third person. It says Gemara Tamon Tanino, we learn, anything that was born from the purple light, all the way around the clock till the end of Elul, in other words, that, that whole year, the year begins in Rosh Hashanah. When's the last day of the year? The 29th day of Elul. So if anything was born in that calendar year, Harel and Starfin. These are one year for Meiser Behema. You throw them in a pen. The tenth one that comes out, Harizim Meiser. Chamisha lefni Rosh Hashanah v'chamisha lacha Rosh Hashanah. Amen, Starfin. But if you have five that were born right before Rosh Hashanah, and that's the cutoff date, Rosh Hashanah, Aleph Tishrei, is the, the cutoff. And then you have five more. That, it wasn't five born on Tishrei and then five born in El. It was five born in Elul, and afterwards five born in Tishrei, past the cutoff date, Amen Starfin. We're going to see. There's three times a year. They call it Goyre, like by, by, uh, by wheat. So there are three different times that you harvest, but not harvest. It's for animals. It's not a real cutoff date, but this is when they would, would take the Meister Behemoth. Very interesting. We're talking about garen, which has everything to do with fruit. So there's another two concepts in fruit. When it comes to, let's say, grapes, how do you decide when a grape is a grape? When it blooms, when it comes out, when it starts. How does that correspond to an animal? Pregnancy. Conception. The, the moment the grape comes out. But there's another period of time in fruit, let's say with grain and olives, and that is shlish. When it's edible, when it's viable. It's not just conception. It has to be viable. So by grain and by olives, it goes based on a third of growth. How does that correspond to an animal? Eight days old. Because the Torah says that you cannot bring a carbon unless an animal is eight days old. 
So it's not viable. Not viable until it's eight in terms of carbonos. So Mimela, so too by Meiser Behema. So does that apply to Meiser Behema? Does a, an animal have to be eight years old in order to be mafresh and in order to be considered one of the ten animals in order to take it out of the pen? So the Gemara from here you see, it doesn't go by conception when the mother gets pregnant, and it doesn't go by a shlish when the animal is eight days old. How do I know? Don't say that it's like chanata, whatever the word is, blooming, whatever it is. Listen, because then it should say the word pregnant. We're not talking about pregnant. We don't care about pregnancy. Remeir was the one that discussed before something about pregnancy. We don't care about pregnancy. We care about when the animal is born. Forget about pregnancy. So, Chanata or pregnancy has nothing to do with Meiser Behemoth, says the Gemara. And Tamak Yishlish, and also don't tell me that there's, we care how old the animal is. The moment it's born, it could be part of Meiser. Listen, because if it has to be eight days old, so now you have to reverse it backwards. You have to say that the cutoff date is the 22nd of El in order to give it eight days to get to, to, to the end of El, to 29. So you see that we don't care how old the animal is. As long as he's born, the boy, he has to be born. That's it. Rabbi Shammai, B'Shem, Rabbi Bibi, Rabbi Chia, all these interesting names. Rabbi Shammai. Said in the name of Rabbi Bibi, Rabbi Chia. Kishlisha It's not true. The animal does have to be a certain age. Now, I think it's interesting here because all of a sudden it says, Ki Rabbi Shimon. So you have to explain that our Mishnah we're not going according to this sheet of Kishlish. Like we explained before, our Mishnah cannot be going that you have to wait until the animal is eight days old. Because otherwise, you, have, you should say the animal at the 22nd of El. Our Mishnah goes according to Shimon. Don't remember Shimon. Mechusazman. Mechusazman means anything below the age. In other words, the age is, it has to be eight days old in order to be viable, in order to consider it a carbon. So if it's less than the eight days old, says Rabbi Shimon, it's not a problem. You can, you can do miser on an animal that's less than a... By the way, I don't want to start the shear off like this, but I just want to tell you real quickly. If anybody was ever jealous, like a, no, I my mean, nose is not jealous anymore. But if anybody's ever jealous of being a Maggie Cheers, I just want to tell you what it, what it took to prepare today's da in Shkol. Got up early, and I sat at this table, and I sat at this table, and... After I did the Likas Chametz, I sat at this table. And then my brother-in-law brought me a bowl of chont because he realized I'm not coming for dinner and I didn't eat breakfast yet. So he brought me chont. So I have a question I'll tell you. But that's why my eyes are closing, etc. It's, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. Really, somebody should say Tehillim because I did not peek at that Vav and Zayin yet. So, and, and, and I have to get to the hotel and it's Erev Pesach. But we'll see. Zogli Gemara. Come, Rabbi Mona, im Rabbi Shammai, Omele. Ah, come on, Ellie, what's the big deal? I know, it's not. I know you're loving it. By the way, tomorrow I need you to say two daf. Come, Rabbi, I know you're in there. To show. Come, Rabbi Mona, im Rabbi Shammai, Omele. So he got up. He's like, what's going on here? Did you really say this? Omele, Atam Asad Milsa, Tamon Tanino Ben Azayoimer. Benazi says, Haluli Misasrim Latsmo. The ones that are born in Elo, you have to separate them, divide them by themselves. They're all by themselves, the category of themselves. So it doesn't mention anything about the 22nd of Elo. It says, it seems like anything in Elo. Where did Ben Azai separate and say, oh no, no? It's not, it doesn't mean uh, born at the last day of El. It only means all the animals are born until the 22nd of El. It doesn't say anything like that. So, what comes out here is that Ben Azai is going to go like Rib Shimon. What does Rib Shimon say again? That I don't go, I don't base it on the eighth day. An animal that didn't reach eight days old. I could also use it as miser. So Benazah is going to have to go like that. Well, that's a big problem. Because Reb Shimon is a yachid. It comes out that Benazah is quoting 
is basing his opinion on one individual Reb Shimon and not on Chachamim, and we don't like that. Says Gemara, no. You're right. At the end of the day, we go based on the birth. But if an animal is born on the 22nd of Elul, let's say, and he's mechus as man, you shouldn't, do not use him as a miser now. So when do you give him miser? You're going to have to push it off to a different time, to other. Gather all these animals that are born in those last few days of Elul. You can't do Meiser. Why? Because Chachamim hold that Mechus is mine. You can't use his Meiser. If an animal is not eight days old, you can't use him. He has to have, be, has to have eight days. I, it doesn't seem like that from Benazah. He did, never mentioned anything. So he's not telling you it's a problem. As long as the animal is born in Elul, says Benazah, you can use him as Meiser. Does Ben Azay tell you when you're going to do it? He never said when. All he said is that you could use the, the cutoff date is the last day of Elul. And he's sticking to that. Ben Azay sticks to that. It's the last day of Elul. But I will tell you in Afkamina that if the animal is born in the last eight days of Elul, do not use him as Meiser right away because that's called Mechus Isman. You're going to have to do the Meiser later on. But when's the cutoff date? Ben Azay is only talking about cutoff date. All he mentions is cutoff date. He didn't tell you when to do the miser, so there's no there's no hechra, says the Gemara. There's no proof whether he holds like Reb Shimon or he holds like Rabbanon. I can be dark, I can say he holds like Rabbanon also, and just do the miser at a different time. So I'll say the same thing. Push it off. It was born after the 22nd of Elul. You have to do the miser together with all the Elul guys. Begoyrenaba, do it 15 days. Like, uh, Goyrenaba, no other. Yeah. Omer Bchia, Zoi Simeres, Yomim Shabachor, Mechus's man. So, it says in the Pasuk here, Lifnei Hashem Alekecha, this is talking about a Bachor. Bachor, any animal that is born, the first born. I might have mixed up today, Bechar and Meiser, Meiser. I said it goes in the car. Mistake. If I said that, it's a mistake. Bechar. If the firstborn, you have a bunch of animals, every firstborn from that mother goes to the car, the Bechar, male. But it says in the Apostle, look what it says in the Apostle. Toichlenu Shana Bishana. Only if, you can only eat it in the first year. You have one year to eat it. Question, when does that year start? The moment of birth or the moment it's not Mechus Zman anymore? In other words, the moment that it's eight days old. So where do I, do I have a year and eight days? 365 plus eight or it's 365 from the day it's born? So from here I see The first eight days of his life are part of the year. I only have 365. From this idea that I could use Meiser starts from the day he's born. But I can only do it afterwards. Fine, maybe. But the first eight days are counted. Omer Rebbe Mano. Rebbe Yoyna Abba Shomelo Minado. He proved it. This idea that it's the, it starts from the day, from the moment of birth. Bechar. Kol Bechar Shei Being born is what counts. Not eight days later. Hazachar Tagdish. The Zohar becomes Kodesh. From the moment it is born, that's when you start counting 365 days. You don't wait until it becomes Ro'i Lamizbeach eight days later and then start 365 days. The official halacha in Yerushalmi is pastored by official halacha bay, says the Mishnah. The way it works is. There are three boxes, and each box contains three saw. So three, three saw, three times three. Memelo, you have 14 gallons, I think it is. Maybe, did I make a mistake? 
I forgot. I think it's two point four. Uh, whatever. Something like that. It's not that much. I thought it was going to be much more. That's the truma the first time. But you do it three times a year. So you really have 27 at the end of the day. On each box it says, one says Aleph, Beis, Gimel. The mark. Why? Because you have to go in a certain order. You have to use Aleph first, then Beis. Rabbi Shmuel Yevonis They're marked not in, in Loshu Kaidish, but in Yevonis Alpha, Beiso, Gamo. Says the Gemara, says the Mishnah. Ain't that Targuit Chofus? You don't wear, I guess in Hebrew it's also called Chafatin. I think that's what it's called. But basically, uh, what we call today cuffs, you know, inverted cuffs. If I, if I want to steal money from the Mishnah, I go in with my cuffs. And I throw in some machsa shekel. The point is, you don't want to be chashud. You don't want anybody to think that you stole money. A maizah shahaya. Maybe we have a second name for maizah shahaya. When I was a caterer, every single chasana, the kala's jewelry and all her stuff from the yichud room got stolen. And different things were stolen. So I set up a trap. I put money in a suitcase. And I took pictures of it. And I put a video camera right above the suitcase. And I went to a screen and I watched how one of my employees with her mother, that whole scam, one stood, took all the money and walked away. And I approached her and she denied it. And it turns out my wife was at the wedding. So they had to do a shtickle search and they found the money. And because we found the money, so she gave back 90% of the stuff she stole in the previous month, she went home. We held on to the mother, and she got all the stuff. We got some maisa. But the bottom line is, people could take stuff and put it in their clothing, and you wouldn't know. So meila, you have to wear certain clothing that doesn't that that, that won't give you the chashab. Loy be pargud chafos, v'loy be minal, and don't wear shoes. Another maisa should come out tell you, but it's a true story. I'm not going to say who it was. One of my sisters, we were at my cousin's house. This is the end of the maisa for today. I hope. We were at my cousin's house, and we left my ho- the house, and she was maybe seven, eight years old, and she was limping, pushed limping. And my mother, Zechariah Levrach, said, what's going on? She goes, ah, my foot hurts, and limping. Finally, my mother took off her shoe, and Lego just poured out of her shoe. She stole Lego, and she put it in the worst place possible. She was stepping on Lego. Ay, ay, Anyway... So do not, but you know, people do things for money, for diamonds, it's you do a, you know, you swallow, whatever you got to do to, to, to get the stuff out of the, the base amigdash. So don't wear shoes, like sandal, like tefillin, but like the kamea, shemirachim, I put it inside a tefillin, inside a kamea. Kamea has a pouch, the, um, how do you say the kamea in English, the, um, whatever the word is, you know what I'm talking about, the little uh, scroll. Amulet. Amulet, But the amulet comes in a little pouch, so you know, you could. Put some money in there. Says, you know how people are. Ah, you know why this guy got the machla? Because he stole. He must have stole last year. That's why he got it. You know why he became poor? He stole. Or the guy is building a house somewhere. Like, you know where he got all that money from? <laughs> the guy makes 10000 an hour. How does he afford to build a house? He stole from the lishka. So here's a yusoid in Yiddishkeit. It's a big idea in Yiddishkeit that what? A lot of times people say, I'm guilty of this as well. They say, listen, I'm doing the right thing. Akash Baruch knows that what I'm doing is right. So what do I care that that guy is, is saying that I'm a Shegit? What do I care? It's his problem, not my problem. No, it's not his problem. It's your problem. You have to make sure that nobody talks. Not only is he have is he responsible for what a Kajbarko thinks of him, but he's responsible to what the Brios think. It's a tremendous chiddush luchayr. Who cares about people? You know, Torah says. Finally, it's in a Mishnah. We had it all over Shas. You have to be clean. Not only me Hashem, but also umi Yisrael from other human beings. There's an Indian to be Motzachain. People should find that you're a good guy, but people, not a Kodesh Baruch. Says the Gemara, 
So here goes that sugya that's connected to Lela Seder, and it starts off with this line. But in Mesech the Shabbos it says that I'm permitted to move, to do something called Tircha, to work hard on Shabbos for very specific reasons. You're not allowed to work hard on Shabbos, you're not allowed to be Matriach, but you're allowed to if you have guests. I'm allowed to be Mefana room. There's a lot of luggage and massive boxes. You move it out, four or five boxes, so I make room for my guests. Or for the base Medrash. I want the Bacham to learn Tyra. I take out four or five boxes. So Rebbe Zira Shalas Rebbe Yoishia. Kamo. Hushiyun Shakubais. How large are these boxes that we're talking about? And now we're turning to the Ches Omid Bey's sponsor. Schos of a great Shidduch for Dino Tamar. Bas Esther Rifko. You see? Dailam saw that it worked with Mark Steinberg, and here we go. Here he is. Mark Steinberg is going, yes. Yishkoyach Mark Steinberg, I see you're on. Yishkoyach for the Siyum. Not today, because today is Chalamoyed Pesach. But today in Chicago, he made a Siyum. I'm set this Psachim for the whole Shul. Yishkoyach. Nilmoyed Sassim and Mefarish. So we can learn from our Mishnah. If we know in our Mishnah, let me just get my light over here so I can see what's going on. So based on our Mishnah, we'll learn from the Sech Shabbos what the shear is in a box. By us it says that there's three boxes. And each box contains three saw. Shem Tisha saw. Total of nine saw. Shem Esrim Vesheva saw. Total, total of the whole year is 27 saw. That's how much money they collected. Or they used for the carbonis. I thought it's not that large of a sum because it came out to me one point five million dollars. I might have been completely off. Because I'm thinking about all the carbonis. I don't think one and a half million dollars is enough money in terms of all the, the carbon tumid and every single day. So that's seven hundred carbon tumids plus all the musafim. It's a lot of money. I don't think one and a half million dollars does it. But okay. Er, so. If we're going to take that amount, so the, the Mishnah says over there, you could use four or five boxes on Shabbos move times three saws. You know about, let's say, 15 saw. That's what it should come out right now. It has to go in order. First you use box number one, then box number two, then box number three. Aboisai, here's the sugya for Lel Hasaydar. Tremendous, tremendous. Hashgacha Pratis. This is not a joke. This is up there with Mashiach, Hashgacha Pratis. The whole Mesech Psachim and a whole sugya for Lel Hasaydar. For people that are in America listening to this, they'll benefit from it. People in Israel that are hearing this on the first day of Chalmaid. You just had it last night. It's unbelievable. Taman Tanina. We learned. Again, so going back, we're talking about boxes on Shabbos. So if you're carrying on Shabbos wine, how much wine are you over? Each item, when we learn about Shabbos, each item has to do with the chashivas of the item. So how much wine is considered chashiv that you're over if you take it out of your private domain into a public domain? How much, are you, how much wine is it that you have? How much is it? How much is it? I could learn Hilchas Shabbos from Hilchas Pesach. The daughter of Rebbechia, Arba Koisei Shomru. Unbelievable. The four Koises of the Lela Seder, Yeshnon Revia Shel Yain Bi Talki. So, what does that mean? All four cups are a Revius, a Talki. In other words, what we call today Revius, Revius Halog. So, whatever the shear is, somewhere between three and a half ounces and five ounces. Okay, call it four ounces. Four ounces of wine is one revius. That's the four kaisas. Why? Because the way you make wine is you take one part wine and three parts water. So, one, one quarter of a quarter. What we call today revias, let's say, let's call it a becher, a four ounce becher, a quarter of that 
is the shear that you're chayiv if you go out into Rosh Hashanah because a quarter of that is enough to make a full cup. All I need to do is add three parts of water, and boom, I have a full cup of Kiddush. All right. So that's the amount. A quarter of a quarter. A quarter of our reviews. Now you skip all these uh, your three lines, courtesy of the Gro. Yayin Kedem Gimio. So how much wine is it? The amount that you swallow. The amount that you can make a full cup with it. Now, if you already have diluted wine, somebody already made the concoction of one part wine, three parts water. How much wine are you taking out? Over there, it doesn't make sense to say a quarter of a quarter. That, that doesn't do anything. This I can learn from this Allah. Water on Shabbos is the amount that you swallow. That's why they took it out because it's before. Enough water, says Rebuda, in order to smear on whatever that, that makeup stuff that they put on the face. Skip that line. Uh, skip even more. Now, how much is a kais? Rabbi Yovin Omar, Tetrotoin Verevia. I see the, the Tikkun Chalatin doesn't, it's not Gurus it so much. The word Revia. Tetrotoin. But it was a sheer, a known sheer that they knew that day, in those days. It was, that's a, a Revias. Mao Lishtoisen Bikrach Echad. Now, talking about the Seder. Can you drink all four cups of wine in one shot? I want to be going to all four. I don't have time for this. I need to go somewhere. Boom, 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 boom. Says the Gemara, Amid Omer, Rimon Omer, Rabbi Yoisi, Hala, Im Shom, Rabbi Sakna says, Lela Seder, tomorrow night, not tomorrow night, Motsi Shabbos, Lela Seder, there's a minog, Chasidim do it, and believe it or not, the Gronics do it, they sell, they say Halal in Shul, so let's say you said Halal in Shul, Im Shom, Rabbi Sakna says, Yotza, you doesn't have to say Halal at the, at the Seder, and what does that mean? So between the third and fourth cup, there's no halal. I could drink three, four, right at one after another. So if I could drink three and four, one after another, so I could drink one, two, three, four, one after another. You see from the fact that I don't have to break up three and four with halal, because I'm yaitz already halal in shol. So Mela, there, it's not important to make a break between the cups. So I can take four cups, fill them up, and just chuck them down, and I'm yaitz all four cups. Says Gemara. Fine. Piskin. What if you're drinking the wine very, very slowly? You take one cup. We're talking about one cup, and you sip away. Sip, sip. Now the 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 tikkun chalatin says over here because wine is different than food. Food, you can satiate yourself by eating a little bit at a time. You eat a little bit, a little. Your stomach becomes full. Wine, it's not in the stomach. It's more in the throat. It's how you, the, the satiation comes from drinking it in one shot. So maybe sipping doesn't really do it. And that's not how to drink the kaisas. So this Gemara, that's not a problem when it comes to the kaisas. Hada Amra, Klum Amru, says the Gemara, Klum Amru, You're not supposed to get drunk. That already we had in in Psachim. You don't get drunk with wine. Why? Because how are you going to say the howl? You, you can't say how when you're drunk. So if I care, you got to be careful not to become drunk during the Seder. I don't want you to get drunk. So I'm shasa bepiskin afuene mishtake. If you drink it nice and slowly, you just sip away. You won't become shaker. And that's great. See, yaitza, drinking it, sipping it. Says Gemara, ma'u lotzis biyayin shal shviz. Some don't learn that song about Lela Seder, but let's learn it. Talking about Lela Seder. Shemitah. This coming year, Rabbi Yisai is Shemitah. So, interesting, not everybody is familiar with these halachas. When it comes to Shemitah, the interesting halacha that when, let's say, there are no grapes in the field, no more grapes, the animals can't eat from the grapes. So all your wine, your chayiv in beer of the wine. You have to destroy your wine. When is this time? When is this beer? Pesach. 
Every fruit has its own time. Cucumbers is one day. Wheat is another one. Wine, grapes is one time. So, the shaila is, okay, so I have to destroy my wine. But I don't want to destroy my wine. You know why? Because I want to be yaitza dalekosis. And as we mentioned earlier, mitzis lav lehenos nitna. I'm not benefiting from Shemitah. I'm doing what the Torah told me, what the Chacham said. I have to do Dalai Kaisis. So Mitzvah Slav Nesnit, no, perhaps I can use Shemitah wine, even though it was after the time of beer, I'm a chuyv to burn it, a chuyv to destroy it. That's one thing. Another thing is that you're allowed to save, I'm allowed to save three suudos. How much is a suuda of wine? So that we already had an Erevin, if you recall, a very simple sugya, if you do a, a Erev Tchumen, and you want to use wine, how much wine do you use? A Revius. That's a suda for wine. So says the Chazanish, a beautiful thing here. Why am I saving three meals? I need three meals. I have to do Shalosh Sudas and Shabbos. Whatever. But tonight, let us say there, I have to do four cups of wine. So perhaps they allowed me to save a fourth cup of wine. I need four. That's the Gemara Shailer. Mal Lot says, B'yayin shel shviz. Says Gemara Tonei Rav Yishayah. Tonei Rav Yishayah. Yoytzim b'yayin shel shviz. Yes. It's okay. It's a lot of mehenes nitnu. You're yoytzim. Mal Lot says, B'kunditin. Can I use wine that has different flavors in it? Honey, different things that they put in there. Says Gemara Tonei Rav Yishayah. Tonei Rav Yishayah. Tonei Rav Yishayah. Bakavara says that this sweet kind of dessert wine is like wine. It's like a And let us say there with this wine. So this is interesting. The Tiklan Chatin says, we're talking about wine that's diluted. One, one quarter wine, three quarters water. Can I use that on Pesach? Now what's the Shaila? So he says, because one of the Pshatim in Dalit Kais is because it says the word Kais by Paroi four times. And it says in the Furish in the Pasuk that the, the uh, wine guy, he took grapes and squeezed it right into his cup. Like, hey, it's a Geffen, and he squeezed it into his cup. So what is that? That's undiluted wine. So if Paroi drink undiluted wine, maybe in the Seder we have to do undiluted wine. Whether it's undiluted whether it's undiluted or diluted. Remember, we learned this. You have to have the flavor and the look of wine. Red wine. I don't want to say anything now. I don't want to get in trouble from uh, you know, our blue friends. But it says before we share in the Gemara, Mitzvah lotzeis biyayin adoim. There's a mitzvah in the last say there to use red wine. I'm telling you, even today, a chashav guy told me, what's the problem? Why can't you use white wine and throw him some grape juice and make it red? And I told him, no, it's not so posh. I used to think like you last year, and because we learned Pesachim, I looked into it, and I saw that the Achorim talk about it, and we discussed this. You cannot do it. L'chayra, according to most of the Paiskim, it, that doesn't work. It's a tr- First of all, it was a shayla, if you could dye food on Yantif, that's another problem. But even if you say you could, I think it was from Zaman about that, it didn't become red wine. You took white wine and you made it red. That's not red wine. Red wine is a certain look, it's a certain type of wine. That's the chash of wine that we're supposed to use it to say that. And don't try to make uh, shortcuts with other tasty wine, very, very good wine. I'm not saying they're not good, but they're not red. Unless, of course, let me just repeat, I just copped another out. If the white wine is meshuba, it's chash of mine. Then you can use white wine. Amar Yirmiya, mitzvah lotzis biyain adam shenemar al teira yain ki is adam. Seeing this red wine ki itim b'koyseno, he's talking about become shikur that red wine. By the way, when we're learning psachim, so there's one I forgot who it was. It was somebody that said there's an ingin to use a glass cup so that al teira you could see the red wine. And somebody else told me recently also that they're makbid on the on the glass, but I'll try to do not with the glass only because I think it's more chashet to have silver and so. 
In terms of chashivas, but okay. Yesh v'yesh, here, al teire. Pani, mebushal, kimetubo. So, is this talking about, some, some, some learn that this is not mamish about Pesach, some, but others learn that it is Pesach. Mevushal. Mevushal wine. Now what's the idea of Mevushal wine? Mevushal wine is not a problem in terms of Hashivas. It's very, very Hashiv. It actually is more Meshubach in terms of the Gemara. It's better wine. So what's the problem? The problem is, it's, it's not right for the Mizbech. You can't put it, use it as Mesach and Mizbech. Why? Because it's not Kibriyasoy. The Tikkun Chantan says it's not the way it was created. So that's the Shiloh. On the one hand, I'm using a, a, a better wine because it's Mavushal. On the other hand, it's not Roy from Mizbeah. Could I use it for the Dalal Kaisis? Ma'u Lotz is Biyay Mavushal. Om Rabbi Yoyna, Yoytz Miyay Mavushal, Rabbi Yoyna Tamei, Rabbi Yoyna. The Maise Shahaya, great story. You can have a Shasi Arba Kasi de Pischa. He's drinking the four wine, cups of wine of. Uh, on Pesach, and it was Mevushal, have a chazek reishe ad chago. His head would hurt him. It, it was too, it was so strong, it was such good, the wine was so good, this Mevushal wine, you see the, but he used it, and it was better, that he had to like, wrap his head all the way to the chag. Now typically, chag is sukkahs. But over here, there are some that say, it's until shavuos. And I'll tell you something interesting. I remember that we learned this Maisa in Bavli, and I searched. I have a great program, Barilan, and I found this story in the Dorim Daf Memtesam the base. But what was very interesting is that over there, the same exact story, but the name is Reb Yehuda. So I was just thinking, I don't know. I, I'm not, I, I'm not uh, any, uh, maybe it was Reish Yud, and somebody decided it's Reb Yehuda, and somebody decided it's Reb Yehuda, I don't know. But over there, it's the same exact word for word almost. There's a few differences. But over there, it does say Mephurish till Shavuos. It does say Shavuos. And that's why those who explain it over here, that Chag means Shavuos, and not Sukhs like it always means, is because of that Sukhi over there. But the, the, the story continues. Chamisei Chadam Atrenisa Apenehirin. This Gaita, this Chosho lady, she saw that his face was glowing. Omro Saba Saba, which is not such a nice lotion, I think. Old man, old man. Definitely one of these three, three things happened to you. Oh, the Shasach Amra. You're glowing. You're so happy. Life is great. You know why? You're drunk. You forgot about all your tsars. Not a nice thing to say to a goggle. Oh, the Malbim Rizak. Or you earn a living. You're a loan shark. You take ribbons. Oi, the Megadu Chaziria. This would be a great time to pull out Yeshua's gift. You are, I thought I don't have it here. You are a Megadal PIGs. And you make a lot of money like that. But it's not a good thing to do. That woman, in other words, you, should go you know where. You should have a horrible life or die. The Chadam Eiland loss, if one of these things, Milaya Lesbi. I don't have any of these three. So why am I glowing? A little party shiachli. I I have Tyra. I have access to all the Tyra. I don't forget it. It says in the Pasuk, Chachmas Adam Ta'ir Panov. The Chachma of a person, meaning Tyra, will enlighten his face. It says the Gemara, similar story of Avoh as the Tveria. came to Tveria. Big time of Chacham. The Talmud of Rabbi Yochanan in Tveria see that his face is glowing. Aaron Talmudin le Rabbi Yochanan, the Talmud says Rabbi Yochanan, Ashkin Rabbi Sima, why is he so happy, excited? Is it because he found some sort of mitzia? Also the Gabe, or like uh, what happened to Leo Jacobs? He found the mitzia, but it was the opposite of glowing because he had to give it back. But maybe he had a glow inside because he knew that he's going to get that exact amount later on. Also the Gabe. So Rabbi Vo shows up by Rabbi Yechon. After Rabbi Yechon heard his Talmudim saying this not nice thing, that he saw, he found him and see. Omer Lei, Rabbi Yechon knew the truth. And he tells Rabbi Vo, May oirei sochat shaman. You're glowing, you probably hear something beautiful, something new, a psachidosh. Omer Lei, yes. To Yisefta Atiko. I found... Old manuscripts from the Tesefta. You know how geschmack that is. 
Koralei Chachmas Adam Toir Hono. Should we go weiter? What time is it? No? I know, but I don't know how many minutes that is in the thing. Okay, we'll stop right over here. Rabbi Isai, if I don't see you, have a Chag Kosher V'Sameach, have a Freilchen Chalamayid, if you're watching this on Chalamayid. And uh, tomorrow, Be'ez Hashem, I have no idea when and how. V'siyat V'Shemaya, I'll do at least one shir, hopefully two. Davav and Daf Zayin, Be'ez Hashem. If you're an American and you want to watch it and you're already done with the Haroises and the Mar and you have time, so join us. We'll send out a message somehow. I'll bother uh, Morch Ashkenazi and Eli Dykman, those guys, and they'll uh, put it out there somehow. So, Chakosher V'Sameach, have a great day, Rabbi Yisai. Shkoyach, Shkoyach. Gidyantav, Gidyantav. Shkoyach Noam, thanks for sticking around. Shkoyach Rabbi Yankiv Schomburg. Hold on. The guy asked that I that I point this camera at the Zoom. Wow. Okay, let's see. Actually, you know what? I should do it this way. It's in New York, in the garbage can, I think. I think it made it to the garbage. What happened was I left it out during when I brought it home, and my brother woke up and he was he was shocked to see a dover acher in his house, and he tore it into shreds. Now nah, making it up, but uh, it most likely ended up somewhere uncomfortable for dover acher, or very we should say very comfortable for the. He likes to eat trash. They so probably put him right where he belongs. Be able to talk. Ben. Oh, one second. Hold on. Good night. 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 Good Thank you, Avi Sherman. Shalom Aleichem. Uh, you know, Rebelli, you, you said that you're going to a hotel. Where mm. is the hotel? It's not it's in California. California. Oh my. It's in California. Oh my. San Francisco. Uh, oh my. <laughs> Thank you, Avi. 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 What's Pshat? How many people do you know? I know people that missed the first night. I don't say I don't, I don't say Sierra before Nitsa anymore. Here's my story. I'm by my shver. I'm by my shver, and uh, the middle of Magid, I leave to Atzala call. We ended up going on three calls back to back. I come back. My my shver chatzayis by twelve thirty. The lights are off. Place is shut down. It's like Pesach is over. It's done. I come back and my wife and my shvig are sitting there waiting for me and I, I, you know, I, I finished up by myself, totally forgot the whole thing. The next night by Mariv, they start, they start the shenich and I'm like, oh, so we pray. So after that, uh, yes. uh, I had that in mind, the next Tataras and Dharam, that uh, from here on in. Hey. Right. You know, just gotta. I'm saying, if you do the Dav, Bez Hashem, we'll try to be on top of it and do the Sphere Soimer thing. But it's a, it's a nice thing because we actually saved a bunch of people. People wrote in the entire time, oh, you saved me, you saved me, this, that. And here's that guy on the 47th day. David Block on the 47th day. That's crazy. He did. And you know, I saved I saved all the backgrounds, Nehemia. And I left them in Eretz Yisrael. But I had the 
long time for him. Well, last year's good news is coming back this year, so you'll be get you'll be getting them. I don't last know year's got some help. It's a different doubt. Right. They're you gonna know, be last year's a different doubt. Also, World different, news. Also Someone wants to sponsor it to be on your Super World news every day and with Ellie Stefanski's face and his double after be. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, I who. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, cover the fire. No, no, no. Well, they put the story yeah, up. It's back to square. Get that new button finger and hang it already. No, no, listen. If he's funny, he's funny. It's when it's stamps the yard, then we have to mute. Good jokes are, are good to go. <laughs> also, he's very hurt that the Dover Acker stayed in New York. We have to we have to compensate him.